And we're back. Start respite. Use the restroom, top up beverage. Speak to Hori Boulder. Well, as it goes, yours. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, as it goes, yours is a welcome face indeed in these troubled times. Though, if you come to inquire about our stricken brothers and sisters, I'm afraid I have not to report. Yeah. Well, Annette and the others continue their tireless search for answers, and I have done all of my power to assist them. Last. My apologies for the intrusion. I was told Master of no was brought here, and I wish to see if his condition has improved. Nope. Voice wrong. It's Maxima. Now, so as it goes, I've heard about the, pl uh, the part you played in driving back the Imperial forces. Thank you. That you were able to stop them is only for a short while. While well, it gives me hope. Huh? I realize how strange such words might sound coming from Megalian's lips, lips, but I speak them out of the love I bear for my homeland. Because I wish to see an end to the bloodshed. That is why I chose to share all that I know with the Alliance. Though I will surely be branded as a traitor, I am content to bear that ignominy. Uh, it would seem a small price to pay if it helps to prevent this conflict from escalating any further. But enough of my prattling. The war is not what brought me all this way. I came to see Master Alphano. An acquaintance of Essegos and Alphano, are you? Well, far be it for me to turn away good company. You'll follow me, sir. When word reached me that Alphano had returned, it seemed only right that I visit him. Poor lad, it pains me to see him thus. But I take solace in the knowledge that he is safe and well cared for. He fought valiantly at the burn. The popularis he could not have wished for a more committed ally. I know not how he came to be so afflicted, but I pray a cure will be found soon. On an unrelated note, you may be interested to know that I travelled here in the company of another acquaintance of yours. He awaits my return at North Silverty, and I'm certain he would be glad to see you, assuming you can spare the time, that is. Well, if he's in North Silver Tier, most likely he's probably parked in airship, probably said Garland, isn't it? It's it, right? It's it, right? Yeah, this is where Sid usually parks his airship. Look at that. That's the Excelsior. Ah, there you are. I was beginning to think you would not come. It didn't take that long. It followed directly after you. Sounds like you've been through the mill. You should have called me. No, I must confess, tracking down missing souls isn't exactly within my field of expertise. As you may have surmised, I heard much of Master Garland's growing up in Garlemald. Indeed, he has long been the source of inspiration to me. 
Most Galileans would say he's a traitor, that he turned his back on his country. We of the popularities, however, consider him a revolutionary, a man willing to defy the emperor's empire's dreams of subjugation and his inventions. And so it might bring about a better future for all mankind. Please. Revolutionary is a term best served for my revolutionary is best served for my work. I am an in, imperial defector who thought to aid another imperial defector. Mary Master Garden says, I'm humbled to find myself in such distinguished company. Speaking of distinguished company, we heard from Ravon that you ran into an old friend in the burn. Is it true? Gaius is still alive. Like most of them, yeah, I never had the privilege of meeting the, the Gaius without his mask. To think I walked halfway across the burn in the presence of, of the Black Wolf. And he claimed to have severed ties with the Empire to hunt Asians, did he? After his humbling at the Praetorium, one would think he'd have a good sense to stay dead. Should we meet again? I shall be sure to tell him so. Mandara then has spoke of the Alliance meeting with the Emperor, though I still labor to believe what he told us. Did his radiance really claim that Garlemald was founded by the Asians? Mm-hmm. But that is madness. The very notion is absurd. Every fire of my being rails against it. Yes, I see there is no escaping the truth. At the very founding of my homeland, my brothers and sisters have laid down their lives in service to it. The Asians must be stopped to save my people, to save all people. For all the Empire's many crimes, even I did not suspect. Had I known, I would have left a lot sooner. But that is in the past. We are in the present. We must apply ourselves to the problem of how the Empire's ambitions can be thwarted, not only in Eorzea, but in the Far East as well. The Ironworks will spare no effort to achieve that end. The reused wall was a good start, but we can do more, and we will. We will show them what it means to achieve freedom through technology. Begging your pardons, a better message for the Warrior of Light. That would be me. Amanda then requests your presence at the Alliance headquarters at Alamigo. He would discuss matters of strategy at his earliest convenience. Ah, yes, the inevitable messenger. I knew it wouldn't be long before duty called you away. Time, no doubt, it's being of the essence. Can I tempt you to ride aboard the Excelsior? If there's a faster way to rob on site, I would personally apologize to the commander for keeping him waiting. Convenient to have the Excelsior right there. I swear, every time you board my airship, we seem to be barreling headlong into danger, and every time you somehow co contrive to emerge, emerge victorious, which, of course, is a matter of admiral skill. Um, a bold skill. But no one is invincible, Essegos, not even you. So please, take care of yourself out there. Pray you remain safe on the front lines. Though ill-equipped to join the fray, I shall do all I can to assist from headquarters. My colleagues and I have been tasked with evacuating casualties by air. See that you aren't among them, eh? Despite the, the apparent urgency of Rabban summons, the resistance fighter seems content to await for your signal. Requiem of Heroes. Hey, this is the name of the patch. What does this usually mean? It usually means it's the last quest. <laughs> Mandar Odin is waiting. This is a entrance into the thing. Are you ready? Well, first I need to talk to him to get the quest. I need to talk to him again to enter into headquarters. All right, hold that side. I need to get better equipment. Oh, don't have a grip. Clear the spellers. Oh, well. Oh, hey, he's glowing like there's a duty. 
Uh, here, good. I summoned you in to discuss strategy. But first, I would appraise you of the Garlean's movements. Upon speaking with Raubon, <laughs> several cutscenes will play in sequence. It's recommended you set us a significant si uh, time to view these scenes. I got a couple hours. There have been several skirmishes along the border, but as yet, neither side has delivered a decisive blow. We had long assumed that the Garleans would overwhelm us in a straight fight, but we seem to be gaining ground, albeit slowly. As to why that might be, the most likely explanation is that they have yet to commit all their forces. Still, we are winning, and our latest intelligence suggests the Emperor has retreated back to Garlemald. In light of this, we're considering launching an offensive with the aim of pushing the front line forward and giving ourselves some room to breathe. Commander! The Imperials! They've broken through our defenses to the east! What? Our scouts say their forces are being led by Lord Xenos. Lord Heon and Commander Hext have taken their troops to provide support, but we don't know how long they can hold out. So, they've been biding their time, waiting for his arrival, have they? Very well. Send word to our allies, requesting reinforcements for the front line. Should the worst come to the worst, I may need to enter the fray myself. But what of you? Do you still have the strength to fight? You need to ask? As long as you leave the assy to me. He may not die as such, but to see Lord Xenos fall on the battlefield would deal a heavy blow to Imperial morale. I'll see to it the men stay clear. Why won't they open? God! Fucking damn it, this is not the time! What the fuck are you doing? Ah, oh, stop! Shut up! What's wrong? Is it the voice again? Are you sure you're in a fit state to do this? Even more... angry. May Ralgar grant us strength. Give him hell, lad. I, for my part, will defend this place to my dying breath. You can count on me. Meanwhile, at the border of Alamigo. Meanwhile, back at the border of Alamigo. I do that in my... Uh... 1920s, 50s, 20s, now the No words to exchange. We've got your get to combo, a, a G side, get to go ten, a go ten for an attack. Okay, it's like I win. So this is my heal. This is my uh, cap closer. Uh, this is a dot and. This is a combo, so I don't have to worry about combos. So first things first, close cap, add dot. Ready?
Shinobi's power. The art of my forebears. Warrior Blade, but a huge weird gnome for Hey, we survived. Ah, 
bringer of light. It has been too long. No words to mark our reunion? <laughs> so be it. Equilibrium must be restored. And only your death will redress the balance.
There we go. It says a whole bunch of things. You can read it. I was too busy working the fight. I really wish they just had the guy voiceover so we could hear it. Instead of them popping up words on the screen for us to read, but we're trying to do a fucking fight. Your mother chose her champion well. Yet, for all your strength, you will still fail. Dead? Where, where am I? At last, I found you. There's no cause for alarm. Though, I confess, this is not where I had intended to meet. But the place of our meeting is of no consequence, like the war you wage. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. The better path leads you here, to me. I have need of your strength. You have to send me back now. The battle is over. The danger passed. But your work is not yet done. Go to the Crystal Tower. I have left something for you near its base. It will serve as a beacon of sorts, one which I pray will help you on your journey. All you need do is find it. I will take care of the rest. Soon, we will throw wide the gate. And the path to the first will be yours to walk at last. What are you? You're awake. Thank heavens. Where is Xenos? I see you recall that much, at least. 
In the midst of your duel, it is said you faltered and that the Crown Prince seized the opportunity to deliver a mortal blow. Yet before his blade could find its mark, he was distracted by the arrival of a second adversary who bore you away from the battlefield and into the hands of our chirurgeons. Lest you wonder, he left before you awoke. <laughs> As is his wont. Wait, wait. Estinian? Estinian never was one for emotional farewells. Though Zeno spessed it all before him, the battle clearly took its toll, for he retreated shortly after your rescue. Seeing this, the remaining Imperial forces decided discretion was the better part of valor and pulled back, allowing us to re-establish our position. We have since received word of renewed unrest in the provinces, doubtless inspired by the efforts of the Aeorzean Alliance and our Far Eastern allies. Nor does the good news end there. We have also come into possession of intelligence suggesting unrest within the Imperial Court. This would certainly explain why both the Emperor and Lord Xenos appear to have abandoned the fight. A long-awaited ray of hope in these dark times. Where are the signs? Yet to awake, I'm afraid. But please, concentrate on your own recovery for now. You have carried the hopes of some half-dozen nations, and we are all eternally grateful for your efforts. But no one is without their limits, not even you. Leave this fight to us, my friend. You have earned your rest. Ah, but before I forget... I was asked to deliver a message as soon as you awoke. A reminder that you are not alone, though many of your allies have fallen. When you are well and rested, you are to return home where friends will be waiting for you. Now, if you will excuse me, I must return to the front. May we meet again soon, under happier circumstances. down since the video is cut off. Well, this is the most unexpected surprise. So I thought you could find to bed. Well, Count Edmund. Ben de Fortin. When I heard that you had collapsed on the battlefield, I confess I feared the worst. But with you standing here before me, I see now that the reports of your defeat are greatly exaggerated. Thank the Fiori. As long as you, we have you, Master Winsmall, the history suggests we have a fighting chance. Speaking of fighting, you may be surprised to hear that the war efforts are already been felt even here in Ishgard. In anticipation of the need for reinforcements, Autorial will soon be departed for the front lines with the contingent of our finest knights. I would advise you to stay until your strength return, but I know that you would exercise, it would be an exercise in futility. Indeed. I suspect you have already 
have already decided on your next destination. Dark days lie ahead of what I have no doubt, but the light of hope shall ever guide your steps as long as you, we have the will to press for onward. And press onward we must. Farewell, my friend. I pray our next meeting will be uh, under happier circumstances. To the Rising Stones. Taru. By the twelve, I don't believe it. I rushed back as soon as I could. I swear, my heart nearly stopped when I heard you'd collapse like the others. What in heaven's name is going on? Exposition! Talk about my talk with the mysterious gentleman. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. Oh, well, that's helpful. And what else did he say? The better path leads to him? <gasps> if his is the voice you've all been hearing, perhaps the others are with him! Sir Emmerich said the fighting had reached a stalemate, didn't he? But if that monster masquerading as Xenos comes back... Thancred, Yastola, Uriange, Alphano, Alize. You're going to need all of them on your side to defeat him. And I forbid you from going to face him on your own. Do you hear me? Tataru. So if you must leave, go and find the others. Bring them home. For where to start, you said the stranger had left a beacon for you at the Crystal Tower, right? But how are you to find it now that the tower has been sealed shut? There has to be a way. If anyone would know, it's Sid and the researchers of St. Coinax find. Don't you worry, we'll find that beacon for you. Meanwhile, in the Imperial Palace. I pray you have good reason for abandoning the front. 
How could I remain there while the rumor that my son is possessed by a demon spreads like a sickness here at home? I will not be made to fight for the throne a second time. But what of you? Did you not tell me you would destroy Eorzea's champion with the ease that one might swat a fly? A minor setback. He will not escape me again. Where is your grandsire? I would have word with him. How should I know? Do you hide from each other's sight as well? I imagine he's doing what all Asians do. Hmm. He must have found a way to take advantage of this turmoil. Men are not pawns to be played with, Asian. You underestimate us at your peril. This war will not be decided by you and yours. Man must choose his own fate, and I, for my part, will do all within my power to see Garlemald emerge victorious. And yet we never see him sitting on the throne. Pray forgive the intrusion, Your Radiance, but the requested preparations are now complete. We stand ready to begin production of Black Rose upon your order. Credits, roll, let's skip it. And talk to Tataru. I knew you'd be alright, and to celebrate your return, I made this a brand new traveling outfit. Oh, I do hope it fits. <laughs> but now is not the time to fuss over you, your measurements. I must go and speak with the researchers of St. Cornex Fine. Go and rest while you track down that beacon. Meanwhile, in the Gimlet Dock. I don't know. The war zone. The Elizabeth with the Resonant. My enemy. My friend. Had I been but a step faster. Bloody savages! A pity your hunt leads you elsewhere. Not that I am surprised. May you find joy in it. Grow stronger, more savage, and savor every triumph. In the meantime, I will reclaim that which is rightfully mine.
Well, apparently Xenos is semi-dead. In the midst of a requiem for heroes, a voice rings out across time and space. In fields of tranquil light, no you seeds of darkness. Okay, before we do this, uh, I just got a uh, transmog thing. I need to... Uh... Let's go back to Rick and I got a new outfit! I should now wear it! Well, we'll see how it looks first. First thing first. Your job and everything there. Seems all repair. Okay, cool. Up into an inner room. Bring on the volume here. Since we're not doing the server stuff now. I think I have enough. I, I have claimer prisons, right? Yeah, I got 71. Okay. I don't have dispellers. I don't have. All right. Nope. And that just doesn't look good.
I will say this. I don't like it. I don't think it looks good. We'll stick with the current outfit. It looks fine. Actually, no, we won't stick with the current outfit. I die this. Oh, shit. I think I need to buy some more die. Look, I'm going into storm blood. I'm going to at least look good doing it. Jesus, it's 99 degrees here. Of course, leg. Ah. I'm going to take headphones off just to kind of like cool myself off for a while. Well, still getting lag. Oh, Jesus. wonder if this is one of those ones where it's like anybody can make it as long as I have the materials. Looks like it. I'm stuck. Help. Oh, 
look, this is eating away from, from valuable streaming time and starting up Stormbringers because I get or Shadowbringers. Stormbringers. I'm glad I cut my hair. It's cooler. But it's not that cool. Ugh. And take a shower. For Bears and Dragons today. Bears and Dragons later tonight. Uh might be slightly boring. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go. Says I'm sending and receiving. Oh, there we go. Okay. What level am I? I'm at 22. So, no, I'm not high enough to do it. Oh, shit. My glamour plate link. Oh, I got rid of the dies. Like for everything. I need like a big old stack of storm blue. There you go. There we go. All right, back to Ruin Stoll. Put on the headgear. All right. We are about to go into some videos so or turn up the volume. Match my regular mic. Good news, this ghost. We had a stroke of luck in us. Apparently, our colleagues have stumbled upon a hidden path leading down the hollows of, on the base of the Crystal Tower. A path I doubt has ever been found had the ironworks and the suns not added their numbers to the party. Thanks to them, we were eager eyes for plenty down there, checking under rocks and peering under every nook and cranny. Still, it sounds like there's a lot of ground to cover.
No, you better go ahead and give him a hand. Or sounds like tedious work, but not as tedious as waiting around, I suppose. Yeah, it's a as it goes thing. Oh my gosh, it's loud. Either that, or it's just because of my headphones. Because I turned the volume all the way up on my headphones, so I can hopefully have been like catering for not having them on, but it worked so well. Exactly. So I think we we should go and lend a hand. The sooner we find this beacon, the sooner we can travel to wherever it is that mysterious voice is coming from. And the sooner we can work out how to help our friends. We have to find a way to wake them up and before the Empire comes called in again, meaning we have no time to lose. There's a boat in North Silvertear waiting to ferry people to the site. Let's be on our way. Hey, new quest music! Because we're in Shadowbringers instead of Stormblood. Enjoying this, Griffin. Like, just the right size. <laughs> Heading to the service site, sir. Is our eastern shore of the lake, and the swiftest ways to get there is by boat. We got hurry boulders here. As it goes, the search continues, but no doubt we'll find this beacon of yours. Uh, too many people to talk to. Well, let's talk to Colin it though. Yeah, here weighs heavy upon me. It is no wonder, I suppose, when standing in the shadow of an imposing structure. Back to Satahari. people there are should we get to it then pick up anything that seems the least bit device like and we'll make ourselves a pile well if it isn't the hero of the hour maybe you'll change our look we found bugger all without you figs wedge aye aye we could hardly say no to a call for aid from the Scions. Jesse call it the chief of some other business. So we'll be working twice as hard to make up for his not being here. Thrice as hard, even. <sighs> Thank you, both of you. I'm sure we'll find that beacon in no time. I'm not seeing anything out here. Do you reckon you could squeeze in there, Wedge? And get stuck halfway? No, thank you. I could try if you like. Tataru, no! We couldn't ask you to do that. Oh, I'll be fine. This receptionist is not afraid to get her hands dirty. Sorry, I, I meant to say, the scholars haven't finished their preliminary assessment of the site yet, so we're not supposed to venture too far in. Hmm. What's that you got there? Now that looks promising. Uh, 
isn't that the ironworks symbol? Counterfeiters? Now, now I have you. You are right. Well, what's Says happening? Says very honest. <laughs> I have you now. <laughs> Stay with me. Focus on my voice. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Wait, this must be it. The device. Oh, this is supposed to happen. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Oh, safe journey, warrior of light. Find our friends and bring them home. Look at me, sir. Your place to a tyrant. There's no freedom in that. This is one battle you cannot fight. Away with you, sir. Go. Say your spirit is a cross. Always comes in good things. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us, and still, still it came to this. Philia? Your time has not yet come. That's warrior gear. The warrior of darkness? Okay, yes, I already. I'm trying to recall. Yeah, see, you can make it out. I awake. New narrator. Something vague, yet urgent, calls me to action once more. This is a warrior of darkness's voice. Well, oh, there's someone over there. Oh, 
Hi. Rare to meet someone out here who's not a peddler themselves. What brings you into the wilds this time of night? Right. But it bread is day. <laughs> well, if it ain't the oldest joke in the book. Me granddad, God's rest his soul, used to tell that one to the barman at kicking out time. And when, pray tell, did we last have a dark night? You rotten old drunk yet, he'd reply. Uh, yeah. Over a hundred bleeding years ago, that's when. <laughs> Hundred years. Hmm. You got that look down to a T. I'd almost think you meant it. Ah, got to you, did they? Poor beggar. That explains it then. No, thank you. Well, I've roads to travel and wares to sell, but you, you best hurry along to the town nearby. Just head east through the trees and aim for the shining tower. You'll find the place soon enough. It's the biggest settlement for Malms around. Go on now, friend. They'll take Good care of you in the Crystarium. Well, better let my short legs take me as far as I can quickly as I can go. Need to figure out what the hell's going on here. Dizzying heights it rises, the gleaming spire, its tip threatening to pierce the blinding canopy. Is it a crystal tower? There, it will all begin anew, between dark and light, the pure and the corrupt, the one true struggle. We are now in a new expansion. Apparently I can't down. But it's probably because uh, I left everybody on the other... The wherever I went. That's your chocobo! Why can't I... Why can't I call you? Okay. To Australian Gen 4. Mooch XP off of Holt. Other class. Ooh, Viera.
Every face in this city I know. Yours, I do not. He's a cart gate guard. This is the threshold of the Crystarium, stranger, and I am its gatekeeper. If you would enter, you will answer my questions. Okay. From where do you hail? Uh, Ulda? Do you take me for a fool? No such place exists. Oh, oh. What? Had you given me an honest answer, I would not have barred your way. We care little here for a person's place of origin, but instead you chose concealment, and I will not suffer you to pass. Yeah. Wait. 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 Oh my. That one had eaten. It must have gulped down the whole hand. Ring and all. Everything all right, Captain? Hey, it's that guy. Quite all right, my lord. Just a stray sin eater, and a weak one at that. I see. Weak or not, we should be on the lookout for more. But I see you've met my guest. I will escort him to the Crystarium myself, if you've no objections. Another of your mysterious friends, is it? I should have known. Very well. I'll inform the others your guest is to be given the run of the city. Pray forgive my less than cordial welcome. May the rest of your stay with us be a pleasant one. Uh, thanks. Come with me. I will answer whatever questions you have when we are somewhere more private. Hmm? Right then, before we plunge into the where's and wherefores, let me first thank you for answering my summons. I had intended to bring you directly to my personal quarters, but I fear my aim was slightly off. That you are still able to make the crossing unharmed is a great relief. And so, we come to the question of where. The realm in which you now find yourself belongs to one of the 13 reflections or shards, the first, to be precise, even if its inhabitants are largely oblivious to the fact. As to wherefore, Having been awarded the rather grandiose title of Crystal Exarch, <laughs> I, in uh, my capacity as caretaker of the Crystarium, thought to seek the aid of you and your companions. Do you have any idea how much trouble you caused? An inkling, yes. I can only beg your forgiveness. Matters here forced my hand. But all shall be explained in due course, I promise you. Let us begin with the glaring skies up above. Here in the first, the world has been all but consumed by primordial light. It began a century ago by this realm's reckoning. A luminous flood swallowing everything in its path. More than nine-tenths of this star was lost. And the fortunate few who survived 
are hounded by abominations born of that catastrophe even now. Sin Eaters, we call them. The creature you saw earlier was one such monstrosity. It was to save the first from this menace that I learned to bridge the rift between worlds, that I might call upon the aid of the greatest of heroes. And though it meant depriving a world of its champion, I had to try, for in saving the first, you would bring salvation to the source as well. Huh? But what manner of host harangues his guests in the middle of the road? Let us continue our talk within the Crystarium. Sanctuary for the living in a world all but resigned to oblivion. Each stone was laid with hope. The town itself a symbol, a monument to defiance in the face of death. No would be hero could fail to answer its call. For who among us does not yearn for salvation? Roger. And here we are. Welcome, my friend, to the Crystallium. We get a white oak workman's coffer. Now, a full and frank discussion of the pri privacy of my study would be in order. But I think our conversation would be more meaningful were you to first gain a firmer grasp of the situation here. To that end, I would like you to visit a few of Crystarium's civic leaders and glean something of this world in its predicament. As you see, this path will take you directly to the Aetherite, a convenience of which I am sure you are only too familiar. Being the rightful object of my summoning spell, you should be in theory be able to reach all the way back along the, your etheric trail and find a connection to the source, believe it or not. I strongly suggest you complete your, this attunement before venturing any further. I mean, this is true whenever you find a place with Aeth, right? You attune to it. After you've done so, walk up the steps next to the Aetherite and head to the left. To arrive at the crystalline mean. This is where you will find our collective of crafters and gatherers, as well as their spokeswoman, Catless, one of the people I would like you to meet. Another is Morin. He, to reach him and his cabinet of curiosities, you'll want to avoid, avoid the aforementioned steps, take the exit to the, on the left, and simply continue straight along and down until you come to the large doors at the end of the path. The third and final person I would like you to meet is Bragi, our man in charge of trade and distribution. He is to be found in the markets which 
you can ex access from the opposite side of the Aetherite Plaza. When seeking out each of your, my colleagues, you will uh, visit the major districts of the city and hopefully gain a, a feel of the place. I trust my directions are simple enough. To the right and down the where now? My apologies. I forget how confusing the Crystarium can be to newcomers. Not to worry. Not to worry. I'm sure you'll soon become accustomed to its twists and turns. In all honesty, the true challenge may, may be in finding the right way to approach citizens. As you've discovered during your encounter with the captain, the people of this world are unaware of the existence of other stars and will struggle to accept the truth of your origin. That being the case, when they ask whence you came, as they inevitably will, I suggest you claim to share a homeland with the Crystal Exarch. There is an unspoken rule here for peering too deeply into that particular mystery. When you finish making the rounds, pray meet me in the large large courtyard at the center of town. Till then. If anything, my dog came with me. It was. By focusing your senses, you detect the flow of vastly distant currents of ether. Your connection to these energies is faint but stable and should allow transportation to your aetherites and the source. Alright, so you said go up the stairs. That is downstairs. Aged Amaro Tamer. But isn't this place where the Chocobo Cube should be? Uh, it is Porter's, but for some reason it's Amaro's. I mean, come on, folks. You keep using the same verbiage. Guess what? Two of them in a row.
There we go. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Rare to see a, see a place as well stocked with goods, isn't it? Not here. I'm going to go soon new to our fair city. Well, for what it's worth, we've chosen a fine sanctuary. The Exarch can throw up a barrier if the Sydney years come knocking, so it's a damn sight safe, sight safe room here than it is out there. Safer and more civilized, too. Thanks to us. Thanks to us in the mean. We work together to procure materials and resources and craft the goods which make city life possible. This is the place to visit if you need a coat mended or a kettle forged. Just don't go thinking it'll be, be handed to you, but on a plate with it, like those you'll mourn lay about. Here in the crystalline crystarium, we work for a living. Though I see you're no stranger to honest Leary. You don't have that whiff of indolence about you, like some folks I've met. Still, I can't quite pin down your profession. Where is it you're from? Uh, same place as the Exarch. One of the Exarch's countrymen, you say? I see. Well then, I'll work twice as hard to make, sh make you feel welcome. Our city wouldn't even exist if it weren't for him, and any friend of his is a friend of ours. It's really quite incredible when you think about it. They say his grand magic summoned the crystal tower into existence. Pulled the entire thing out of thin air. It wasn't long before droves of refugees began congregating around its base, desperate for shelter after losing their homes in the flood. And that's how the Crystarium began. As the Exot invitation building started growing up with the help of some curious relics, they brought forth from the tower. The place gradually expanded into the thriving metropolis you see today. The city stood here for decades. The city stood here for decades now. Yet the eldest among us swear the Exarch looks exactly the same as he did back then. He is indeed a man of many mysteries, but for all his secrecy, he has never yet let us down. If so, he and you wished me. If he and you wish to remain silent about your shared homeland, then the folk here will respect your wish for privacy. I am, however, more than a little curious to see any crafting talent you might be hiding. You ought to contribute on that front. We should be sure to come back and visit once you've had a chance to settle in. Just that for cast lists, and I'll find you a niche here in the crystalline mean. You can help us uh, keep the cogs of the city greased and turning. Your exchange with Catalyst has taught you about life in the Crystarium. I mean, there's a way up there, like some sort of forge here. <laughs> oh, there's a ramp. Oh. Oh. Okay, maybe I'm not meant to go up there. Okay. Oh, Louie. Anyways, where was I? Okay, so I got this one and I got this one. No, no, I got this one and this one. That one and this one. I think will be next. And these two.
No, I, I probably could have just zapped myself back to the Azerite Plaza. Yeah, it's an emulja. Seem to be taking care of those things. Better remember, I've got sprint. Actually, I think. Oh. Oh. Like herbalism or something? Like a hidden garden. Morin. Uh, excuse me, sir. Are you recently come to the city, perchance? I'm quite familiar with our civic roles, you see, and, uh, well... <clears throat> well, I mean to ask is, have you brought any books with you? A rumpled scroll, even? A scrap of scribbled parchment? Huh? My apologies. Literature is something of obsession of mine, as well as profession. Librarian Moran, at your service, and this humble collection is known as the Cabinet of Curiosity. As your powers of perception likely informed you, my colleagues and I are responsible for curating all manners of tomes, documents, and other vehicles of the written word. As horrific as the loss of life in the land fought by the flood is unquestionably was, the damage recorded knowledge is no less catastrophic. We hope to do all we can to preserve what wisdom survived. And tell me, what brings you to the cabinet today? Looking for any title in particular, perhaps a spot of academic research? Oh, no, uh, Exarch sent me. Oh, so you're interested in modern history? Splendid. A thorough review of recent events can can often yield novel perceptives. I quite agree. If you prefer something visual to to accompany the account, then I think of an illustrated history book of children somewhere. Just just a moment, I'll fetch it for you. A little history of this place. Ah, and here we are. Would you like to pull up a chair and make yourself more comfortable? <clears throat> On with the lesson, then. A hundred years ago, a near enough not manner, villains known as the Warriors Light slew the Shadowkeeper, the Steward of Darkness. In the wake of his, its tainted deed, this tainted deed, light began to pour into the world as if from unseen cracks it pooled and swelled until, without cease, until the day an enormous blinding wave rose up and swept across our star. We called this calamity the Flood of Light. Everything it touched is leached with life vigour, leaving naught behind but a luminous wasteland. Yet just as we seem, it seemed as all would be lost, a saviour appeared before us. The oracle of light, 
who stood twixt us in the approaching doom, and by her power did she stay the flood. Thus was Novrent, and Novrent alone spared the fate of Eurasia. Tragedy, however, would however arrive in another form from the blasted emptiness that dozens of horrors of strange and terrible as aspect had bedeviled the few folk who, who survived her. These sin eaters were light incarnate, and their flugent's flu presence stole the night from Novrent sky. Even now, they circle the remaining bastions of civilization, ever on the hunt for us, even hungering for our flesh. And thus did the world become what it is. Should we ever wish to hear the tale again, I would be glad to retell it to you. Or, oh, if you would rather speak on other matters, I too would be my pleasure. I should be glad of your co of the company. In exchange with Mor with the, your exchange with Morin, has taught you about the flood of light. Got kind of close. He's a Hrathgar. Go to the city, friend. Spinning head and wider eyes give you away. Welcome. My name is Bragi. And I am master of these markets. They gave the district another official title, but I'm not in the habit of using it. Too florid by half. In any case, our merchants stock a wide range of equipment, so you should have anything your size. Forgive my asking, but you are a dwarf, yes? We don't get many of your lot coming down from the mountains, he says. Uh, I'm actually a lolafell. Hmm. Must be a dialect I'm not familiar with. Let's see if you can straighten this out. You those two in front of us. The shorter one is a Hume. The taller one is an Elf. That sturdy individual over there is a Galgent. And the one with the horns is a Dran. And then you have the large scaly chap with long legs and a na knack for raising livestock. Those are the Zun. Um, which is apparently not what, what you call them. Do the dwarves have different names for all the people of the, the world, or did they come up with a common tongue in such far-flung region? Ah, the same as the Axot. Well, that explains it. You don't get much further flung than that. We've had a few of you a lot pass through the recent years, and despite their obvious learning, they've floundered over the simplest things. But not to worry. Should you find yourself confused by the local language or customs, I'll be here to answer your questions. In exchange with Bragi, I've taught you about the peoples of the first. Apparently, lot of like dwarves. Which is silly. I would not call these dwarves. I would call them halflings. They're not quite gnomes. Maybe gnomes. Gnomes might work.
the Musica Universalis. I like these Ethernet shirts. They look kind of cool. Hey, check this out. Got the pendants next to this old bar here. Kind of neat. Anyways. Uh, actually, let's... Did a little teleport. Ethernet Plaza. I believe this is the last one. You now attuned yourself to all the Ethernet the shards in the Crystarium. Lakeland is now accessible as a, a Ethernet destination. So we're at the foot of the crystal tower in lag mode because the X art's like right here. Right. Right. Here. Like right here. There we are. Lag is done. Well, how did you fare? Did your uh, did my colleagues help you form a clear picture of the pe world and its people? Yes, it seems you have t treated to a most. Uh, Thorough introduction. I understand it is something of a chore, but uh, it was necessary that you grasp these things before we proceed. As for the Crystal Tower's origin, you may have noted the details are, were sparse. The structure is, in fact, the self-same one you know from the source, transported to the first in its entirety. It was my first attempt at breaching the boundaries between worlds, something of a trial run for, for your eventual crossing, and although I do not know which era I tore, tore it from, I do know that its arrival served to set the wheels of fate in motion. <laughs> You've done as I requested and learned uh, something of the world in which you find yourself, and now it's time that I fulfilled my half the bargain and explained what has befallen my, your comrades. This is a conversation I would rather have in the privacy of my quarters. However, I must go on ahead to the tower and organize a few things, but I shall see that the guard knows to admit you. Just like that, then Grantia is... I am not familiar with that name. Is there something I should know? Yeah, he fell asleep in the thing. Ordinary tale, but I'm afraid I found no such individual residing in the tower when it passed pass into my care. May up you could revisit this mystery another time. For now, I think it's best that we focus on the present. Okay, what happened to Graha? You remember during the first Crystal Tower series, but this is way back when I was just finishing Realm Reborn and I had to do this for three alliance raids, right? Floyd the Crystal Tower, Grahatia had the Allegan Eye, the one red eye. Uh, we ran into some Allegan clones. Um, clones. We uh, went through the Labyrinth of the Asians, got into the Circus Tower, got to the top, then Doga and Uni, Unei, -E -E I, I think it was the name. Um, 
got kidnapped by uh, the Cloud of Darkness, and so we jumped into the World of Darkness uh, to save them. Uh, in the end, we weren't able to save them, but we were able to get out with Graha. Graha was, in the meantime, uh, during that transaction, was granted the gift of pure elegant blood, so both of his eyes ended up being this elegant red. Because he has elegant blood, apparently, in him. Well, like in royal blood, I should say. Pretty inside of the accent. It's just standard gatekeep. It was a Makote, so... Welcome to the Ocula, my private study. We can speak here without fear of being overheard. I have much to explain, but the truths which I must touch upon in doing so would cause only distress and confusion to the people of this world. Pray keep that in mind. Now, I am sure you are desperate to know the fate of your fellow Scions. To put it simply, they are here in the first, their arrival, however, was not as recent as you may imagine. Here, time flows at a different pace from that of the Source. In the space of a single hour in your home world, an entire year might pass in the first, and the reverse could also be true. The pace fluctuates without rhyme or reason, and it cannot be predicted. That said, we seem to be entering a period of near equivalence, and thus, for the moment, you need not overly concern yourself with the passage of time. As for your companions, however, Eustola and Urianger have dwelt here for three winters, all told, while Thancred's count stands at five. Even our more recent arrivals, Alphino and Alize, have lived in the first for almost a year. Hmm? Okay. My intention had been to summon only you, but the art of reaching across worlds has proven exceedingly difficult to master. Thus it was that my fumbling hand closed upon those to whom your fate is most closely bound as well. As they were not the object of my summons, their transference was incomplete. Though they may appear to possess corporeal bodies, they are in truth merely spirits that one can see and touch. Consequently, while you yourself will be able to pass between worlds with relative freedom, they will not. Much as it grieves me, they are stranded here, unable to return. Wait, what? And find a way to send them back. Okay, I'm rumbling. We spent every waking hour searching for a way to reverse the summoning. In the beginning, at least. Anyways, sorry, I got distracted because I swear I hear heard thunder. As you may have surmised, however, our efforts met with little success. And then we all but abandoned the endeavor once Urianger shared with us the vision he had witnessed during his journey through the rift. In that chaotic no man's land between realms, time and space warp and blend in unexpected ways. What Urianger saw was the future that which would one day come to pass. In his vision of tomorrow, the first was rejoined with the source. This collision of worlds brought about the eighth umbral calamity and the deaths of countless multitudes. Amongst those who perished, Urianger clearly saw the fall of the Scion's mightiest champion. He watched you die.
And thus did the Scions embrace their exile, and began searching this world for a means to forestall the coming catastrophe in yours. Their souls are stranded in the first, yes, but they have fought on, desperate to save their home and you from destruction. Nor have their efforts been in vain, for it was they who finally established that the elimination of the Sin Eaters will indeed serve to prevent the Calamity. Considering these circumstances of our meeting, you would be forgiven for doubting my version of events. And so, before all else, I would suggest you track down your comrades and hear the tale from their lips. I shall of course be happy to assist in these reunions, and you need not make any decisions regarding your involvement until you are certain of where you stand. Meanwhile, I promise I will not rest until I have found a way to help your friends return home. What say you? Have I earned your trust for the moment, at least? For the moment. Excellent. You will not regret this. With that settled, we shall have to see about getting you ready for the road. Traveling across the rift has no doubt left you weary. I will arrange for a room where you might rest in comfort. While it's being prepared, perhaps I can show you around. Crestidi and boasts a number of residential districts, but I have been informed that the room has been has just become available at the pendants. Which, as it turns out, is perfect. Pass there will take us past the markets and I hope to give you my own introduction to their wares. Come along. In other, this is the the RP mechanic as to why you could spend gill here on the first that you essentially required in, in the source. Elegant tombstones. Oh, God. <laughs> I fear it would not be practical for a to establish one to which you are accustomed. Show me the means to access. 
access the commodities of your home. A van cam sin? Yes, I hear. Of course I hear. You simply are for me today. My dear Feo Uri, Paragon of Pixie Cut. For you, I have the most vital task. This fine gentleman is a friend from a distant galaxy. And we have need of a means to ferry him back and forth from his home. Might you be able to assist us in this matter? It's been from beyond, isn't it? From beyond the rest. Wonderful, Falcon. What a brave and reckless and marvelous thing you did. You've the heart of a pixie, you do. After careful consideration, I have decided to grant you my assistance. Make a pact with me and the 500 in. But I can yet have it. Did your van not come with you when you crossed over? Your suit, your mail? Uh, yes. Everything. Yeah, I think so. I will build your listening suit, and you, my clay yak, like the branch which sprouts from the sapling, our bond will flow unbroken from one to the other. Raise your hand. Bound now, dearest Sapling. Come, come then, make your request. Tell me your desire. I must have been written for already by now. Hey, that that last part kind of sounded a little ominous. This world of yours, ah. <laughs> Uh, Tataru, Tataru's baby. Yeah, I, I need to send a message to Tataru and Pippin. Pippin, my husband, Pippin. He needs to know that it, that, that everything's good. Tataru, because it's important. Actually, send a message to Tataru. She can pass it on to, to, to Pippin. Pippin might get like all weirded out. Plus, he might be really busy right now because he's doing the fight with the thing. Anyways, send a message to Tataru. <laughs> This is the that this is just the kind of like the failure rule thing is basically why can you do er everything that you could do in the source over here on the first? <laughs> it's just in in lore wise of how this still works. Like think about this. Like in in, in World of Warcraft and Shadowlands. You go to the Shadowlands and you got Oribos, but you can still receive your mail. Uh, my my druid, who's got the Brew of the Month Club, uh, he gets his his brews. He can pick it up right right there and anywhere in the Shadowlands. I not really explained. It's like one of those things where it's really not that important. We don't really need to like put a story reason in, in wise. This is we're just providing convenience for our. It's not like you have to like travel or something. And now I can actually use a mount.
Oh, that, that was voiceover. I don't think I turned up the volume. Hopefully you heard it. Anyways. Ah, oh, there you are. It's just finalizing the matters of your accommodations. We have a private room for you at the Pendants for the duration of your stay. To make use of it, uh, to make use of, of as you see fit. When you're ready to retire, the ma manager will show you to your lodgings. Uh, pray rest and recuperate, and we shall convene in the Ocarina Nun. I believe that reco covers all the practical concerns. Thank you for answering my call, Ghost. Uh, we are denied. We are denied the comforting blanket of night, but may peacefully peaceful dreams attend you nonetheless. A pleasure to meet you, sir, and welcome to your new home at the Pendants. Your room is ready if you care to retire. This is actually the in rooms, and it's amazing. Like, I want to be able to set my apartment up like this. Or if I'm able to get a house, I'm going to set it up like this. Because it looks so good. Oh my god. Look at this. It's so good. I love it. Oh. I know you. You're the warrior of light from the source. Where your darkness? What? Did you just? You can hear me? All right, it has suddenly become not as on ominous. Oh, gods, how long has it been? I... I... That was what I called myself in your world. The Warrior of Darkness. My real name is Ardbert. I used an alias in the source. A daft one, looking back. If you recall my tale, it was my comrades and I who caused the flood. We thought our home doomed. Go, oh, shit. I remember when we fell, defeated by you and yours. I remember our audience with Minfilia, how she listened to our pleas and returned our souls to the first. The flood was poised to swallow Norvrant. Minfilia and my friends, they... They surrendered what little they had left to hold it back. Just faded away. Leaving me to bear witness. Tell me, do you know the year? How much time has passed since we caused the flood? Um, about a hundred years. A hundred years? A hundred long years. My hands find no purchase. My gestures catch no eye, and my pleas, be they whispered or screamed, reach not a single ear. I am a shade, cursed to do naught but drift. I feel as if I've been walking forever. I hardly noticed when my mind and body began to fray at the edges. Then bang! 
My senses were sharp again. I felt like a fish being reeled in, and before I knew it, I found myself in this room. Why is it that you can see me? What are you even doing here, come to that? Exposition. <coughs> you were summoned to save the first. A waste of time. This world is beyond saving, like those who try to save it. Muddled as my mind may be, I've not forgotten that. But if fate has brought me to you, the one person in this God's forsaken world who can see and hear me, then perhaps there is a reason I endured. If I can find out why I was left behind, then maybe... Maybe I can bring this journey of mine to an end. Well, I'll be watching, Warrior of Light. But do me a favor. Be careful out there. This world has had its fill of heroes. Alright, I think this is a good stopping point. I'm going to talk to the manager. Alright, your room is the big play room. Let's, let's take a quick little tour here. There we go. And summoning bell. my retainers. My dresser, or moi. My onion journey where I can see things, relive stuff. Like, I seriously just just want to like set up a house or a, 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 like make this mini because I think this is bigger than an apartment. I would love to basically recreate this. Because it's it's great. Like, I would love to have this as an apartment, honestly. Kind of open. Obviously, like modern day sort of thing. I'd, I want it a little bit different. I like the kitchen over here, and then I don't know. Where would I set up my streaming and stuff and everything? Third deal. The desk wouldn't have the end ending journey. This would be my, where my computer would be. Kind of like this whole like stool thing, like. But I think I'll cut it there. Uh, I need to prepare for Bears and Dragons later on tonight. Oh boy, we're getting to the end of the module, which means uh, I need to figure out what I, I think we'll probably go into out of this uh, the next next campaign.
But thank you for watching. We will continue in, into Shatterbringers. Now, I believe we have a quest here, and then it splits off. Has a, we get basically a two-sum quest. Then loops back around. Um, but we will work on, I think, uh, one or two more quests from here. So we'll do that from here. And uh, almost 41, which... Or 72. See if I can sync everything up. All right. Thanks for watching. Video, post, CubsOutLoud.com, YouTube.com slash CubsOutLoud for all the VODs, uh, as well as the podcast videos, as well as the old Drag Race, which uh, we'll be, should be posting tomorrow along with the regular podcast. Uh, yeah, the weekends are going to be all the streams and stuff. During the week, it's that's that's my free time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.